to the final meeting of the special special act charter. charter drafting committee. Um, we had uh, two documents that we'll be taking a look at, but first I will just open it up to see if there is any public comment. I don't see any. <laughs> you raised this first. Go ahead, my do you, friend. Do you want me to stand over there? Or? Yeah, yeah, please stand up there. Yeah. Hi, I'm Adam Cohen. I live on North Street. I've been looking over the uh, draft of the recommended charter and didn't see any provision for uh, free petitions or recall petitions. And um, my personal preference would be to have those in there. I have a sample from the city of Methuen. And I think it's healthier for our local democracy when provision is made if citizens are unhappy, they want an issue raised, for there to be an orderly procedure for them to engage with their government and get that discussed. So uh, I hope when you develop the narrative, you can talk about those two things uh, to some extent, explain your reasoning, and uh, you know, I think maybe there'll be further dialogue with the city councilors about maybe putting those provisions back in. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. City Councilor Marianne Labar. Thank you. Um, I know that Barry Roth, who is a resident of mine in Ward 6, has come here in regards to concerns of him having something added on to the charter. And last week I had him into Wendy's office. We went through quite a bit of his concerns. And because apparently he did not come to a meeting or something to submit in what he felt was very important, and Wendy agreed and she for not see a problem of this being added into the charter. Under Part C, Rules of Procedure, when the City Council relies on a formal recommendation for its voting, it shall accept an opposing statement for review prior to its vote. When and if a differing position exists, the con position shall state in writing the specific reasons for such disapproval. The City Council shall enter the objections as part of the record in the same manner. They enter the recommendations prior to voting. And I don't have a problem with that. I think that no matter what committee you go into, if, you, if there's an objection on it, it should be submitted in. And I also think with a procedure like this, it can be followed very, very well. Um, uh, yes. Cite your, cite your location again on that. Yeah, Part C, Rules of Procedure, that's what Barry has on here. I, we and don't I, have a Part C. Are you, you sure you're not talking about... Um, this is on um, Section 2.6. Thank you. Okay, Exercise of Powers, rules Forms of and Rules. Yes. Okay. And Councilor Tacey is here, and he now, spent some time... Time to time adopt rules, regulations, procedures which shall be in addition to the following, and then it lists several. Yeah, and he would like to have what he is suggesting being added on mm -hmm. to that. And Wendy, like I said, we had a meeting, and Eugene came through the door, and I said, stay here. I called Barry. Barry went into Wendy's office mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And we agree with what Barry is saying, mm -hmm. and Wendy cannot figure out why this was never added on. Okay. Okay, I don't know if you want it. We can comment after we get to the public comment section. I'll give you an answer. Jean, do you have anything you want Thank to say? You. Thank you. She did. She said, Jean, you stay here. <laughs> so, uh, I'm glad you listened. <laughs> <laughs> it really, uh, it, 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 we thought it was pretty easy to just attach a written statement. But we don't want to burden anybody in the administration with writing that statement. You know, if they want to submit a statement, it can be attached to the, to the record. Um, so we were fine with that, but uh, there's no resources available for somebody to be writing statements. That, or, I mean, the minutes of the meeting, that all the public uh, comment always happens outside of the meeting. Right. You know, it's not in the, so it really never gets um, scrutinized, especially that of vote um, to accept meeting minutes. So we didn't have any problem. And Wendy didn't either with something being attached to um, something as all as long as it's written by. The person that brings it forward. So, any other public comment at this time? 
uh, close the thing and then we can ask for your yeah, ask question. question. Yeah. Are you so we close public comment. I'm recognizing uh, Tom. Are you referring to what Marianne was just talking about? The when there's a vote and there's a opposition. Opposition that it, and so you're saying that you have no objection to it, but the opposition should be prepared by whom? By whoever is opposing. Whoever the opponent is the opposing viewpoint. What, what I understood what I understood Garrett to be saying was that if there are opposing views within a council subcommittee or in, and I think that's primarily what he was addressing it to, but if there are opposing views within a, a body that was going to be making the decision, that the opposing views should be made part of the record, not by, uh, presented by someone from the public or someone else. It should be the opposing views that are deliberated within that body. Is, is that what others understood it to Let's say? Let's take a, take a round. Marianne, do you want to augment that and then go to Todd? Yes. Um, at our meeting that we had with Wendy, that was brought up. And Barry had agreed, no matter what committee that it goes through, which it could go through conservation, then it could go to ordinance and then come to city council. The easy part of it, which Barry said, yes, that's fine, was no matter what committee you're at, if there's an opposition, it would be logged from that committee's min minutes. Yes, there is an opposition in the person's name, but the person doing that opposition, say he's not there, he could send a letter stating that he wanted recorded that how he disagreed on that. So when it came to city council, that would be attached to that ordinance or what, whatever of that opposition from that client or that resident. Oh, so it doesn't have to be a member of the committee. Opposition from anyone. Right. Okay. We're sort of jumping out of protocol here because we should have voted to recognize Marianne again. But uh, Todd, you had some. No, that's reason? that's a clarification and quite a change from what he had said repeatedly, which is that the committee would be obligated to do what we sort of did, which is list pros and cons. And we thought, well, if the city council wants to put that in their rules, they can do that. But we didn't really see how that was workable to impose that obligation on a group of people to think about what the the um, other uh, views might be. So, And just, just I'll give, give yep. Yep. we're jumping really badly here, but go, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, that's exactly what um, we discussed with Barry, um, with Wendy. That uh, we didn't want, we weren't looking to burden the committee with any more of that. And if they had an opposing viewpoint, they could present in writing. And it would come attached maybe to uh, something to the city council. It would come attached. So when you have vote of the city council, it gets approved and there is no opponent. There's nothing on it, just that it was approved. The vote, the minutes are not perfect. So again, I'm allowing the discussion only because it's getting recorded in two fashions. So it'll help shape what I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. But Mary, I'll take one last comment that we need to move on. Um, what we figured out was, and Barry agreed to it again, was that it would be much easier because our packets are available for us on Fridays for us counselors to go ahead and have. That way, that objection from whoever the resident is is included attached to that ordinance. And then we have from Friday until whenever, Thursday when we have city council meeting, to be able to call that resident, talk to that resident, and that communication is there. So if we want to do the first vote, we can. If not, we can say, well, you know, I think we need to think about this, so maybe, you know, I'm going to abstain from it from the first vote until we check into things further. Okay. I want to close the conversation, unless there's from other viewpoints this won't be added, because technically, we're done. We've already submitted our final draft to you folks. What we're working on tonight is the narrative. So, um, and it's just some of the explanations of why we came to the conclusions. So I'm basically dumping this back in your lap. Okay. My understanding was that this committee said that we understand what Barry was saying. We felt that it had a lot of validity and should be considered. We just didn't think that the charter was the right place for it. We felt that the rules of the city council was where it should be. That's, a, that's over our pay grade. That's for you guys to decide. But right now, we've given it to you. Uh, I raised that when I made my presentation last Thursday. And I said that, um, you know, this is an issue that you need to resolve. We feel it should be in your rules, not in the, um, 
uh, charter itself. You put something in the charter, you're bound by it. You put something in the rules, you can change it every two years. So I'm just letting you, I'm dumping it back in your lap and saying, good luck. Okay? Quickly, please. Uh, we're just saying what Wendy said. She also felt that it belonged there. I understand. I appreciate that. But I'm just... Good luck. Thank you. Well, Mary Ann, yes. you as city council, in reviewing this charter, you can put anything in there you want or take anything out that you want. Right. So there's still the opportunity to do that if you, if you feel it's appropriate. On your February 8th meeting, that's where you would make that point of view. And, we are. and that statement that you read was a much more carefully worded statement than uh, what we have received prior. And I'm not saying anything uh, wrong about Barry. I mean, you presented his, his points quite well. Okay. So I think we have sympathy for the concept. We're just not sure where it goes in the uh, corporate legalities of the city. Thank you. It's not even the right words, but that's okay. Speaking of sympathy, I have great sympathy for everything that you guys have been through here. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it, Team. Good luck. We'll try to have some of us there on February 8th to answer any questions. Um, for the record, the special city council meeting will be Wednesday, February 8th, 6 to 9, in the JFK community room. Our two city councils present will be there representing their wards and the rest of the city. Thanks for coming tonight, folks. Thank you. Okay. Um, I want to move into um, the narrative, and I want to take a look first at the proposed narrative that Todd and Bill came up with. And then I want to, to take Gail's point regarding the bullets. So, things in the narrative that you have comments on that you'd like to bring up. There's a couple that suggestions of things that we wanted to add in there, Todd, but we need this form to do it. Okay? Hi. Oh, do you have copies? Yeah. Yeah. Come on down, sorry. Just come on up right up front end. Get it. Well, can I can I just start before um, yeah. before we add in and just give you a kind of a brief history? I told David how this played out. Um, I emailed Bill and told him that I had volunteered to, <laughs> to to work on the narrative, and would he prefer to write it or to edit it, to start or to end? And he took the first crack, but he was a little bit confused. Um, it took us a couple of days to get on the same page. And um, he ended up submitting to me a 10-page document um, that I think was a collation of, of everyone's narratives. And I felt that was a little bit long, and I, I tried to narrow it down just to make it as, as readable and succinct as possible. So and I cut a couple of pages. pages. <laughs> um, actually, well, actually the, um, the introduction stayed the same. It's two pages. But I cut the narrative from eight pages down to six pages just in the interest of making it tight. Um, so if you guys are interested in spreading it back out again, I'm happy to do that. But I just wanted to communicate you know, why it was. Um, I, I intentionally thought this should be a summary of the recommended changes that we made, just to sort of draw a line. Because we could, as you see with the bullet points, you know, if we want to summarize the minutes of our discussion, it's, it could go on and on and on. So that was my thinking. If you guys feel there needs to be additions or subtractions. You said there's six pages? I've got eight pages. Well, the, 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 the intro is two pages. Oh, okay. And then so the narrative got cut from eight pages down to six pages. So now it's a total of an eight page document. Well, the next one's a 12. Okay. okay. All right. So let's begin by critiquing and providing any feedback to the executive summary for final recommendations. Um, please, Gail. Um, well, uh, I liked it. Um, I think it's. Um, I think it is succinct, and I think it's um, would be useful to the city council. Um, I, I'm going to have some tiny little uh, corrections okay. that I can just give you separately. Um, I paid more attention to the um, parts that I had worked on specifically, and I had the, your big time. <laughs> yeah, the citizen access part. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a whole little page of um, like two little paragraphs to, to use instead of the, that because okay. there are some errors in there. Okay. Um, so that that's just about all on that. Well, let me just clarify. The, um, I left out the discussion of the, the free, free petition. petition and the referendum. Um, there we go. 
and the recall. I'm sorry, um, because they weren't they weren't additions. They were something we discussed at length, but didn't add. And I thought that was a judgment call. And, and Bill said we'll just cut it out. It, it's not a, it's not something. It's not a change we're making. So the problem, and that gets us to the problem of of, of this document, yeah. which which really is that um, it's. Um, you can see from what we've heard now and again and again that free petition and recall um, are things that there are some citizens very interested in. So to leave it out gives leaves a problem with the city council that they don't have any way to know, unless they go all the way back to watching our tapes, exactly what our thinking was. And, and I think our thinking was useful and helpful to, to, to people who, um, or could be useful to people who who support it to see why we said no. Um, I, I understand that. My understanding and the exchange is that the bullet points were going to provide the, the much more detailed, granular well, explanation. And I guess that's that, that's why I decided, since it wasn't a change, it's still going to be there, but just kind of there. So my, my concern about that is I'm not, I mean, this is a pretty, this is a pretty thorough document. There's some things that we probably have to talk about that have been left out, but it's pretty thorough. And if I were the city council, I would rather have something succinct like this than a, you know, a 50-page document. So I was hoping as I read this that there was enough in it that we could dump the bullet points. And, and I think that's something that we really need to think about as we, as we go around the table. I don't know if we can or not, but uh, I would worry that a great big long document we won't get read. Yeah, so. that, that, yeah. Other comments that people want to? Yeah. Um, actually, that last point of Gales, I think, is a reasonable one. If there is a way to combine these, or to provide enough explanation that says that we did consider these issues, pros and cons, and here's why we came to these conclusions, the rationale in this cover letter. I guess at that point, it's no longer just an executive summary. But if there's a, you know, perhaps that would make these the dot points are superfluous. The bullets. I had um. I had a, a few items throughout the document. Um, they're not editing, um, but rather just uh, where I thought it wasn't a clear we'll reflection. Page of by page I'm just sort of okay. looking for the, the broad overview. And I'd like to segue into the, the d discussion that Gail and I started. Um, do we need two documents, or can we incorporate everything into one document? And if we had two documents, what's the likelihood of them being read if we had a longer executive summary, what's the likelihood of it being read? So can we just dwell on that for a minute? Because I think that shapes the outcome, the, the, what we're putting forward here. At, originally, two weeks ago, we talked about two documents. There was going to be this narrative summary, which you see in front of you. And then there was going to be a compilation of all the pros and cons and the ups and downs of, of all the discussions we had. My Tom. comment is that part of our discussion was that some people relate better to a narrative and others relate better to an outline. Mm -hmm. And I think that having, going through both, the one reinforces the other and it allows uh, a person that's looking at this that may not be, is not going to be familiar with everything that we did, the opportunity to look at it being presented in two different manners and perhaps get more understanding as to the discussion. So with, in that sense, I, I prefer the two documents. I, I believe that, uh, I know that once I, when I got, of course, having been through this often, I know when I got to the end, uh, the last two pages, I just basically looked at the paragraphs to see what they said. I did not read them word for word because it just got to be uh, too much I mean, for me, and I'm familiar with it. So uh, I like the idea of two separate documents both being a little bit shorter. Other, other opinions on that? Let's start with Mark and then go to Red. Well, actually, in a way, you can almost think of these as three documents because there is the introduction, and that's what outlines you know, those first two pages. It says, these were the recommendations, so that's a summary of it. And then there's more of the rationale. But um, I, I think Dave's point is, is, a, is a valid one, too. It can get a little bit too long, and even though we do have headings, that can you know guide people to say if this is the second interest and here's where it all is. And, uh, maybe that does get a little bit lengthy. Right. 
I was leaning towards the narrative until I read the bullet points and stuff, and I think they complement each other. I know they're a little bit long, but I think the two of them do work well together. And as you said, some, some people, you know, they like one over the other, and they're both there. They can read them. And I've already had people, like at the post office and stuff where I live, ask me what's going on and stuff. And, you know, once these get on the website and stuff, I said, I'll let you know so you can read them. And, and they will. So I kind of like both of them. Um, I think there is value to follow on, on Adam's comment earlier. Um, you obviously yeah. haven't gone back through the videos and seen our discussion. <laughs> um, but if there was some place that sort of summarized it, and if you were interested in that particular subject, you can go there and you can get your five paragraphs worth of explanation and how we came to our conclusion. Um, I look at the bullet points as more of a, a summary of our minutes to a certain extent. And I think that has certain value in, in, in the instance of, of Adam, you know, having a question about a particular topic. Um, well, the, we, we could gravitate towards the summary with an appendix and have the bullet points as being an appendix. And then, um, as long as we refer to them in the <coughs> summary introduction, where you say these could be available at here. Yeah, what's your thoughts on there, that? I, I just, I quickly just went through this. I have these filed in my own stuff in somewhat different way, but I think it's a little over 20 pages if you put all the bullet points together, just the bullet points, the way they currently are. Yeah. I and mean, they could be done and tightened up. Oh, are these tomorrow? Is tomorrow the day? We as citizens can submit anything at any point in time. We as a committee have until midnight. <laughs> well, you were, you were saying the... Um, Bullet point, the, the document that David circulated is 10 pages. Is what 10 you, so you extended I, margins and yes. made smaller. Okay, so I, yeah, well, that's fine. I threw it all together. I think it's 12. Yeah, it might be 12. But I uh, try to get everybody in the same font. Interesting font choices you were all making. And uh, same margins and just kind of threw it that way. And that's down and dirty, but I got everybody on the same page and came up with, I believe, 12. With and no then, change in content. With no change in content. And then just to, to follow on that point, if you were to format the um, executive summary and is this Times New Roman, mm -hmm. it shrinks by another page. Yeah. So it, and, and your margins are a little bit wider too. Yeah. So we can I do a five five margin. Okay. So five 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 five. Okay. Um, trees. Other comments, Megan. You're quiet tonight. Um, just I don't want to overwhelm the the city council with more paper on top of reading the charter and going through the old charter and comparing. Um, but I, I think a quick reference is useful and I think the summary is useful also. So I think if we, we already have both, I think that they would find it useful and the citizens looking on the website would find it useful. And um, if it doesn't create more work, I think that. Yeah, we're back to you. Are you comfortable with that? Then? I know that. Yeah. Okay. Then we're going to have one large document that will incorporate an introduction which will reference that those two, two ports attach, the summary of decisions that were made, and an appendix that's attached with the pros and cons. We're all on that point? Okay. Okay. Now, um, moving forward on that, let's take a look at any content-related issues to those two documents that need to be uh, augmented, changed, edited, cleaned up. You have some you're going to pass on to Todd. Todd, you have the ability to just finish this section of it, correct? Sure. Okay. So, do you want to read those? Yes. Read them. Uh, what read them. Uh, what we read and this is in lieu of <coughs> page. Hang on, she has these numbered. Um, uh, page six. And there's two paragraphs you will see there. Oh, she is. Page six to page seven. I'm only changing. It's the same page six and seven from one yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome <laughs> piece of it. Okay, well, I'm only changing the paragraph that begins the citizens' initiative provides a means for citizens. To yeah. What, what's the, the, the head? This is under. Um, yeah, well, it's okay. Right it's above it in, in bold is the bullet okay. recommend, uh, the uh, committee recommends. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, we're, we're stuck, Dale. Where are we? Yeah, we're top top page, page seven other. under the committee recommends keeping in the Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay. Um, so. Um, 
this is this is sort of the original. Actually, I think Bill had like three petitions. He had four. He had three right for three petition, and I just. Oh, good. Okay. So. All right. So here's what I do with it. Um, the citizen initiative petition provides a means for citizens to try to enact provisions that the city council or school committee uh, will not consider, while the referendum petition provides redress for citizens who wish to repeal an ordinance the council has approved or a decision of the school committee. Our proposals modernize and clarify the two procedures. So let me just stop there for a moment because the 15% piece is not quite right. It, there's a complicated but, um, difference between the two. Uh, because there's that second level um, petition for the election, you know, and it goes to 20%. In, so I, I, just, I, okay. I just took that out. It was too sure. confusing. And then I add the following paragraph. We recommend against the adoption of a so-called free petition provision as it carries the possibility of excessive disruption of normal city business. We recommend against the adoption of a recall measure as it cannot provide sufficient standards for determining incompetence can result in a revolving door of elections and recalls, and can undermine citizens' confidence in the electoral process. People comfortable with that substitution for what is written? Mm -hmm. And the bullets, just to be clear, the bullets um, um, lay out even more reasons. Um, so that's just that's Okay, so by consensus, we'll adopt that as a substitution for that paragraph. Uh, Todd, you'll take care of that? Yep. Fine. Um, other areas that people wanted to sure. mark? Um, just going list. on. Pick a page and go okay. for it. Uh, on page four, okay. this is on the, uh, the third complete paragraph, um, became, where it says the council might become strained as members competed for the more prominent position of city council, of council president. And there was another issue that's not included here, and, this, and that setting the council agenda would require more professional resources than now available to the city council. This came up as well. Okay, now, I'm sorry. So you're where in that paragraph? The paragraph begins, others were concerned yeah. at moving the mayor. Yeah. And you're citing two issues here. Uh, um, diminish the flow of information from the mayor and that the, there might be a fight for the council president. There was also a strong issue uh, that came up that, that the council did not have the resources to set their own agenda. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that was important to put in here as well. Okay, now where would you put that language? Just so we um, get rid of the and after watching on TV. And then it's for the more prominent position of city of council president, comma, and that setting the council agenda would require more professional resources than now available to the city council. So I want to make sure Todd gets that so he can put that in. More professional resources. Than now available to the city council. It doesn't change our uh, conclusion, but I just thought that that was something that it was. Okay. Uh, Any was problems made. with that statement? By consensus, we adopt that addition. Mark takes to your next one. Okay. Um, this one with the, uh, the Council Board of Works, this, page, I just yeah, wanted to, page. the same page, yeah. and I just, thought that the language here grants the council more flexibility. I mean, that's true, but it sounded, what we're really doing is just removing uh, a prohibition on the council, leaving it up to the council to do it. And I just thought, change it from granting the council more flexibility to allowing the council some discretion, or allowing the council discretion in overseeing the setting. Todd, uh, how do you feel uh, about that? Yeah, fine, okay, so which sentence is that? Uh, well, it was in the heading. The issue was that okay. there's the heading that says you're giving this okay. new action. But then in the, the next portion of it, the last, the committee concluded the authority to set the fees was not an issue to be, need to be taken up in the charter. That sounds inconsistent with granting the council new powers. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that's why I said, well, allow it, and then just, okay. Okay. and so then I, more I just, passive. Um, right. okay. yeah. So and is then, there a rewrite of that that you would like to propose? Uh, in the heading, yes. the proposed charter allows for council discretion in overseeing and then I also had a comment on the last on that last okay, paragraph. Hang on, just hang on. Did you get that? Yep. Todd? Yep. The the proposed charter allows for council discretion in overseeing. And then the overseeing the setting sense. of water and sewer fees. Is there a, a more elegant way to put that? I guess that's what we're doing. Is yeah. Overseeing. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, okay. And then uh, later on. Wait, 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 wait. Are you comfortable yeah, there? Yeah. 
that. Yeah. Everybody else is comfortable adding and making that change in the heading. Mark to the next <coughs> one. All in the, the paragraph that begins, the committee concluded that the authority, um, and I, I add in water and sewer fees, because I don't know if they were, the set fees was not an issue. So just establish that that's water and sewer we're talking about. Okay, uh, comfortable with that change? But let, let me just continue. It was not an issue um, that belonged outside the, no, was, was an issue that belonged, as I conclude, the authority to set, fee, set water and sewer fees was an issue that belonged outside the scope of the charter. Um, and then I just changed it. The current language regarding water and sewer fees has been removed from the proposed charter. I just changed it to the proposed charter thus eliminates all references to water and sewer fees. Okay, wait, so take me back to that paragraph with your, um, with your new language. Uh, the committee concluded that the authority to set water and sewer fees belonged outside the scope of the charter. Okay. And I guess you can leave the semicolon there. Rather, the council, as an elected body, is better positioned to decide where the sergeant resides, so that sentence changed. And then I just, that last sentence, where you have the current language regarding water and sewer fees has been removed. So I just say the proposed charter thus eliminates all references to water and sewer fees. Okay. okay. Proposed charter. I've got a, a couple no, more. No, I know. Okay. But I'm just saying, just, yeah. this area, everybody's comfortable with that change. Moving forward. On the next one that recommends retaining, uh, maintaining Age. the mayor as both the chair and voting member of the school committee. Age? Uh, five. Yeah. Um, there was, you've got in that first, the third line, there was a consensus that the mayor, I just wrote on the committee, consensus on the committee. Yeah. And then I, I had some problems with the notion, what was really meant by the notion of the autonomy of the school committee. And so the committee was not, what you've got here is the city was, the committee was not persuaded that the current structure undermined the autonomy of the school committee. Well, I think that wasn't really as much the issue as I suggest that the committee was not persuaded that greater autonomy of the school committee from the mayor was in the city's or the school system's best interest. Because we are, it, it does undermine the autonomy. The school committee is not autonomous from okay. the mayor. Okay. But, that was deliberate. Okay. But there is some Could value to that. Right, let me just, just some, some context of this. Um, Bill's language was balance of power. And I, I realized I didn't know what that really meant. So I wanted to be a little more specific about autonomy, about control. Because that's really, I think, what we were getting at. So that's, right. but, but I think your language is, is... Mark, read your language one more time. Um, the committee was not persuaded that the greater autonomy of the school committee from the mayor was in the city's or the school system's best interest. The greater. So just the phrase autonomy from the mayor seems really awkward to me, but I wonder if independence from the mayor works. That's fine. Yeah. Independence, okay. That the greater independence of the school committee from the mayor was in the cities. And then I put dash dash or school okay, systems. Let me just back dash up because I, I realize I phrased this in the negative to not be persuaded. Is there any way we can turn that sentence into positive? The committee was persuaded. Uh, uh, that the best interest of the city would be served if. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Are we there? That's a great rephrase. Wait, that the best interest <coughs> of the city yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> what were we persuaded? Um, So I can okay. flip it around yeah. and makes it two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you want to strangle the school committee. Um, the committee was not persuaded that the greater independence of the school committee from the mayor was in the best interest of the city or the school system. Mm. Okay. People comfortable with that update? <clears throat> Any problems with that update? Mark, your next Okay, issue. just a couple of other ones. Um, in this one, read the committee recommends two-year transfer of warden at-large representatives. 
I just felt it was important to, to highlight that this is school board we're talking about. So just put in school board members instead of representatives. The school committee, re the committee recommends that school board members. For, recommends two year terms for both ward and at large school board members okay. instead of. Uh, the, and then uh, under the current charter, school committee at large representatives. So as opposed to. Uh, so for two years for ward representative okay. serve just emphasizing that we're talking about school yeah. committee. Are we comfortable with those? Those are more grammatical than, all right? But I, I have one more piece. No, don't here. worry. I just want to make sure that okay. we're all, we, we're catching up to you because you're a paragraph ahead of us as usual. Okay? Mark, next. Um, the, uh, the second part, the committee question, the rationale for these practices. Uh, and I, let me just, let me just read what I wrote and see if this, uh, the committee did not, I, th I thought we didn't hear, I wrote, the committee did not hear any strong defense for this practice and, and concluded that a simplified structure of uniform two-year terms was preferable. This alternative, or this, what I write here, this alternative would be less confusing and it would shorten the time commitment uh, Shorten the time commitment. The candidate would. Oh, and shorten the, from the larger, uh, and what would, from the larger commitment, and would shorten the time commitment, thereby reducing, or thereby mitigating the potential impediment to this level of public service. Because I, 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 I like just the first part, the first part, <coughs> I'm not sure that last phrase is necessary, um, but I like, I like the language. Um, so start us down that path. Okay. And what, go what, for what it. Are we, uh, well, let me see. Did I get this right? The committee did not hear any strong defense for this practice. The idea of the staggered four-year staggered four terms. So I just you know write that. It wasn't that we questioned the rationale. It's just we never heard anything supporting it. The committee did not hear any strong defense for this practice, and there, concluded there might, be, there might be something there that the public now needs to share at the city council level. Okay. Okay. That we okay. missed. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. That's a good point. Okay. 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 And at concluded. At time, we did not okay. hear anything. Okay. You know, we had people come okay. and talk about issues, but not that. Okay. And concluded that a simplified structure of uniform two-year terms was preferable. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. That throws it back to the council. So. Okay. So can you? Um, One more time. Right right okay. Slowly. All right. Uh, in the third line, yeah. the committee did not hear any strong defense Stop. for this practice. Of this practice? Four. Yeah. Okay. And concluded that a, a simplified structure of uniform two year terms Pause. was preferable. Simpl simplified structure of uniform two year terms? Yes. That's confusing. Was Preferable? Period. Are you comfortable ending it there? Well, it's, it, there might still be some value in providing a little bit more rationale. Okay, do you mind? That's as far as you got comfortable. Why, why did we conclude this in the okay. structure? Why don't you just go down that path a little further okay. and see if people feel comfortable with that part? All right. This alternative would be less confusing and it would shorten the time commitment thereby mitigating a potential impediment to this level of public service. Well, we, can, we can put that in the positive and make it shorter, which would be an encourage. Because you know. okay. we do talk about confusing, so maybe we are Right, that's that. why I want to leave that in. Okay. So, um, okay, so are you comfortable? Are we, you're not there yet. Uh, are we adding that in? I'm just saying this is what we're talking okay. about now. We're up to this point. Everybody's agreeing with what we've talked about. Do you want to add this last sentence? I Talk. think it goes into a level of detail that doesn't really fit in a summary. It belongs more to bullets. I, I don't disagree with the points he's making, but it causes the brain to sort of stop. It's a complicated sentence, and I think it's a you trip over it. So I would say leave it out. It's sort of implied. It's a level of detail that I would okay. give to the bullets. But All right. Okay, so flag that. So be sure we check the bullets. Yeah, yes. flag that when we get to the bullets. Okay. Okay. Mark others. 
Um, this was, this was a, a, a strong one here. Um, down at the bottom of that page, some members felt that public service is a public honor should not be pursued for financial reasons. You got to establish it. Some, some members felt that city council and school board service is not all public service should be uncompensated. Okay. And that we're at the beginning of the next page where it's contemplate public service. Just put in this type of public service. See that, Doc? Uh, at the top of page six. Second word in okay. this type public, of public service. Wait, so go back and read, read to me the changes that you're proposing. Uh, where you've gotten the third line of yep. that paragraph. Some members felt that city council or school board service is a public honor. Wait, that, that so get rid of the word public. Or school committee or school service. Yeah. Is and that's a public it. Public honor. Okay. Yeah. And then the top of page six. You contemplate this type of. You're adding the three words. Okay. Right. Everybody comfortable with those recommendations? I think it's a good clarification. Yeah. Okay, moving forward, Mark. But just a question. Were we recommending a permanent compensation of elected officials advisory board? Is permanent uh, the yes. right word for that? It is? Okay. Is it every, yes. Every yeah. two yes. years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, and the city clerk, very tiny change. The last paragraph there. Furthermore, the committee was cognizant that for any change to be approved by the voters, we would need to include changes of wood to might. I don't know if we would need to do that. We might need to include a grandfather provision. And it, we, the next sentence begins, this raised the problem of the current clerk. I, I think it's this raised the concern that the current, current clerk would be. That's more actually okay. radical. Yeah. But. Okay. Concern that the current clerk being neither accountable for Because I, I don't think you would have had the grandfather. I think, they, the, I think the council clerk. would have. Point of way, Mazda essentially city clerk for life anyway. Okay, uh, everybody comfortable with those changes to the city clerk section? Moving forward, Mark. Um, yes. We <laughs> <laughs> also have removed. Oh, this one. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is uh, in the election citizen access. This is the last section. Any comments on which page? Uh, six. Just get, if you want to get rid of the. I got rid of the we felt in the line three, just make start the sentence with the. Um, and this one, it wasn't, this issue about the signature thing, it's, um, it's, not, it's not that they, of course the, the city gets to vote. It's not limiting just the establishment of whether this person is uh, morally fit for office to the people who are signatures. The issue is that it just, it's, nobody's paying attention to that. And we're removing it outside the charter where currently it is in the charter. So I, I, uh, How would you like to I just changed this. We also propose to remove the current charter's stipulation that the candidate forms uh, a call on signatures to attest to the candidate's uh, good moral character and fitness for the job. Um, and then this. Let me say right here. The, oh, the testimony we heard suggests that this language is quaint, and it is, and in any case, so roundly ignored as to be essentially meaningless. I'm actually comfortable with that in Utah. Um, we had all agreed that okay. we would change quaint to antiquated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to make this change because it's, it's, this isn't what you've written here. The candidate, the full electorate should have the opportunity to decide. There's no question of that. That still is the case. That was the case with the well, current I charter mean, now, too. What we're proposing to do is take something out of the current charter. Right. And um, I think we need to say that in one sentence. And then can you read back what you proposed again? I, just, I mean, if yeah. we can get into two sentences, that's fine. Uh, yeah. You studied this better, but can you give us two sentences? Yeah. That, we also propose to remove the current charter's stipulation that the candidate forms. Okay, slow down, slow down. <coughs> okay. Stipulation that the candidates 
forms call on signatories. It's can, is it petition or form? Petition? Okay. Petition. Call on signatories to attest. So, call on signatories to mm -hmm. attest. To the candidates' good moral character and fitness for the job. That's in quotes. The good moral character should be in quotes. It's, it's, fitness is not exactly how it's worded in the, the charter, but it's, it's, that's, what the, that's what it means. Is that what's in the charter? In the charter is, um, we further state that we believe him to be of good moral character and qualified to perform the duties of the office. This is the current wording. If we're going to quote, I think we should say, I know that, I know that you took that portion out of the quote, but maybe... So, I think good moral char uh, character and qualified to uh, perform the duties of the office. Take the whole quote. Okay, period. Okay, so we've got to ex extending that quote. Okay, so then you have one sentence to explain. What was your second sentence? Uh, the testimony we heard suggests that this language is antiquated. Uh, and in can any we, case, instead of saying, can we just say we felt, or you know, we, there is a consensus that this? Well, it wasn't this beyond the test. Yeah, we do feel it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and it's just that we felt, and we also heard all this other, uh, these other comments. We agree that this language is antiquated. Okay. And uh, so ignored as to be essentially meaningless. People comfortable with that language? I know a lot of people that don't sign documents when it has some type of an attestation in it. So I personally don't agree with that, but I don't, I'm not going to stand in the way. I mean, to me, this is very minor. Okay, so so the, let me just reread read this. Yeah. We also propose removing the current charter stipulation that the candidate's petition call on signatories to attest to the candidate's good moral character and, hmm, and qualifications to perform the office of duty, because that's, um, I'll just, I'll paraphrase Good moral that. character and qualified to perform the duty of the office. Okay, um, we agree that this language is, we agree that this language was antiquated and so ignored as to be essentially meaningless. Okay. One mild objection, Gail? Oh, no, no mild objection. Okay. Uh, we have one mild objection, but everybody else is comfortable with that? Moving forward, Mark, do you have any others? I'm done. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> good job. Very good job. Gail? Yeah. Okay, I have another one. Um, first, I was going to do this just with regard to citizen access, but then I thought maybe it should be more general. I was going to recommend that in that last section of the narrative, where you call it elections and citizen access, that you separate those two out and make citizen access its own um, title. Because uh, the bullets, there are 10 bullets, and I'm okay. wondering if we should have 10. I have got eight. Got eight? I have got eight. We, we, better check, we better check on them. Sure. Okay, because you, you sent me two that were duplicates, and two that were already there. Okay. Um, this is about trying to mesh the bullet points yeah, and, right. and the feathers. Okay. Um, uh, so that if so that if we're going to have people reading these two things, right. I think that the titles should match. Okay. So break out citizen access and put it under. And, uh, and let's get them in the same order. Let's put everything yes. in the same order. Okay. Um, when we compile this. Okay. So well, do we follow this order, or do we follow the bullet order? I, I, don't, okay. I don't care, but we should just get them in the same question answer and have okay. the bullets follow the narrative. So the election, um, the citizen access is just that one little section where we're adding two, two paragraphs. paragraphs. Okay, so this will all drop this then to the bottom, right. have a new section before miscellaneous uh, called citizen access. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, 
Gail, do you want to go through your yeah. bullets and then we'll just cross them well, off as we go? Let's do the bullets first and then we'll measure them back into the mirror just so we're sure we have all the bullets. Is that okay? Yeah, that's where it goes. Okay, so my first one was powers of the executive branch yeah. and powers of the legislative branch. Yeah. And length of terms. That one. No, we have term limits, yes. But not length of terms? Just term limits. Okay, so length of terms might be this one. Compensation of elected officials. Yes. Should city clerk be an elected official or an appointed position? Signatures on candidates' petitions. Well, yeah. is that under citizens access? No. no. That's election. That should be with elections. No, in, in the bullets it's separate from both. No, but I mean it should be in this sequentially, it should be following elections, okay. Oh okay, I'm just yeah. I'm just yeah. trying to make sure it's there at all. Now what are the, with these signatures, what um, I want Hang on, let's just, I'm, I'm just trying to get content okay. taken care of okay. here. Okay, that might be the second one. City elections. Yes. Yes. So, so those are the two. Good. Don't be crazy trying to find them. Short trip down here. You gave me all of them, but I couldn't sort them out for whatever reason. I'll, I'll try to piece those out again. Okay. Sorry. There were two that kept coming through that looked identical, and I printed them out, and they, they seemed identical to me. Okay. So. All right. Um, general concept on the summary pages. Anything else that's missing? Refresh my memory. Did we talk about the Barry Roth issue? In this, it's in, in the miscellaneous. At the very, it's the very last yeah. section. Okay. Did we talk about all outside sections need to be included in the document? No. 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 That needs to be in there. In, under miscellaneous. Okay. We need a strong statement, because I think we all feel fairly strongly about it, um, that the special acts city council must incorporate the, the 100 special acts into the charter. And the reason would be that this is for clarification and accessibility. Tom, is that right? there? Yep, and what I was going to say before the meeting started is perhaps uh, to make it understood what we're talking about is that we tell our individual counselor what we mean by this. Yeah. Individually, just you know, we finished and we all felt strong. I think it's a, I think it's a great fit, final statement under miscellaneous. Yeah. There, this you know. Well, let's let's work on the wording then. What? Yeah, because we... I don't like the word incorporate. I mean, yeah. Because incorporate could be by reference. Right. Word, word for word. Yeah, should be, should be included. Yeah, included word for word is is fine. Is that is that right though? Wasn't the idea that many of those uh, added amendments are don't belong, are superfluous, right. oh, or don't yes. belong yes. in the charter? No, we're talking those that are to remain. The city council, oh. in the reasoning, the city council should review all special acts of Northampton's city charter. Those that are determined to be <coughs> relevant and viable no still still applicable. still applicable because yeah, yeah still applicable should be included directly in the charter document 
Does that get us to where we need to get I to? I like Gail's word for word. It spells it out. Yeah, okay. Still out, st those that are determined to be still applicable should be. Should be included word for word in the new charter. Okay. Is that binds them into that, that we don't want them over here in the file cabinet. And perhaps, and I'll let you finish and then we'll go back to the beginning. I, I'm, keep going. Who's, how did it start out? The city council should, uh, what do you have there? Um, this I'm trying to figure out. The city council should review all special acts of the current charter. Those that are determined to be still applicable should be included word for word in the proposed charter, in the new charter? I, I in used the draft document proposed. In, okay. In the new charter. Okay. Can we make some reference uh, at the very first clause of this paragraph that Steve McColdrick agreed or offered to review this with the counselors and city solicitors so that? we could get this result, rather than saying the council must do it. It is our understanding that the city clerk, the city solicitor, and the consultant, without naming names, consultant will um, review all special acts. And recommend those that should be included. That are still applicable. And to, uh, recommend recommend those that are still applicable to the city council. You specified those at your presentation anyway. I you talked about them being on the internet right. that they were going to go. Over. Yeah, just what you said. You basically said at the council meeting right. several times. Yeah. Well, I just I want to hit that point home. Oh, no, I think no, it's very agree. important that yep. they just don't leave them dangling out there. That's that's defeats the purpose. Defeats the purpose of what we're trying to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Okay, so, so we, in terms of this closing paragraph, it is our understanding the city council, the clerk, and the, the, and the uh, consultant, and was the, city, the solicitor. city solicitor, okay. the city clerk, city. and the consultant. <coughs> oh, the city solicitor. Right. And the consultant will review all special acts of the current charter. Those that are determined to be still ap applicable should be included word for word in the new charter. And I just want to say something that we feel very strongly about. This, is, this okay. isn't one of those, oh yeah, we think this is a good idea. Is it our firm understanding or our clear understanding? Or, uh, <laughs> no, well, that's just that. Right. I think okay. the, the beginning part is fine, and then we feel very strongly that these should be included word for word. But I think your reasons should go there too, um, to ensure clarity of the new charter and accessibility. Okay, give me a sentence then. We strongly feel these documents, outside documents, these special acts, the relevant, the applicable special acts, need to be fully. Hold on a second. We feel strongly that the, the applicable special acts. Tom, help me out. Need to be included in the new ch Need to be included word for word in the new chart. To ensure. I would start a new sentence. Okay. This will ensure. This will ensure. Okay, so we're duplicating word for word because yeah. uh, we've got that. In the, so, um, is our understanding that this that the that the city solicitor, the clerk, and the consultant will review all special acts of the current charter? And then I have those that are determined to be still ap applicable should be included word for word in the new charter. We feel strongly. We strongly feel. Those applicable special acts need to be included. And we're sort of repeating that. Um, what if we add in, include in the final in the in the final charter or the new charter? It's our understanding that the city solicitor blah blah blah. So I review all special acts of the current charter and include those deemed to be ap 
Uh, put four. four. Okay. For the sake of clarity and, and accessibility, or something. Safe okay. isn't the right word, but that's what also tracks the current track. Who those deemed to be applicable in the final in the in the new charter? Then I think it's probably, that's sort of the instruction. This is yeah. our understanding, and then I think then we need to express our strong feeling. Um, so we feel strongly. Be a strong recommendation. And also, do we want to put word for word up there? Yes. And include those deemed actable in the charter. And include word for word. Those deemed actable in the new charter. Okay, so now we need sort of to express our concluding sentence. We strongly, and if currently we have, we feel strongly these applicable special acts. We've already done that, okay. We feel this will provide clarity. Um, and accessibility. Okay. This is necessary for clarity. We use stronger. Yeah. We feel this is necessary. Okay. We we feel it is necessary to have all provision, all applicable provisions of the charter in one document. Oh, okay. Yes. In the bullets, I can. So, even to say, for example, <coughs> we will lengthen the document, it will make it an easier document for citizens to be We feel that it is necessary to have all applicable provisions included in the document, spelled out in the document. In one document. Okay. Yeah. One document. Okay. Spelled out or included. Just say in one oh, document. Provisions in one document. Okay. We've already said we're, we're document. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to just read that one more time? Sure. It is our understanding that the city solicitor, the clerk, and the consultant will review all special acts of the current charter and include those deemed to be applicable in the new charter. Applicable to the new charter. To the new charter? In. In the new charter. Um, and include word for word those deemed applicable in the new charter. We feel it is necessary to have all applicable provisions in one document. Be strong with you. I think you should put strongly. Yeah. Because it strongly recommend. Should we use the, is our understanding that the city solicitor, blah, blah, blah shall review? Is there a stronger language than, than that? Can give it a little bit of. Yeah, shall review. Okay. Um, and it was pointed out that you need to put the city clerk because there are other people with the name clerk. Okay, the, the name city, okay, the city clerk. The city solicitor. <laughs> and, the 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 table. <laughs> and the charter consultant. Yes. Okay. Okay. Nope, I can read she would know her Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't bring all my stuff with me tonight, but I have this dim memory that when we got the document that referred to all of those special acts and ordinances uh -huh. and stuff, there were other categories. There were special acts, there were ordinances, there was something else, and maybe you know, et cetera. And I just think we should, whatever those words were, we should go back and pick those up for this uh, so they know what we're talking about. And no problem. When, we, when we got the original documents from Mary that we were supposed to study for, for what was the current chart, what is the current charter, there was a document um, that referred to all those outside add-ons, all things that amended the charter once it was in place. And my recollection is that it was special acts, ordinances, but maybe some other words. And I just want to be sure that we get them all in. Just a point of confusion. Didn't um, Stephen say that part of the new charter is going to be streamlined, so a lot of that stuff was going to be intentionally left out and booted over to ordinance? Correct. So they're okay. going to review them all and see which ones should stay ordinances okay. and should, which ones you should stay in. rules okay. and which ones should be folded in. Okay. And so I just wanted to, in the, in the job of reviewing, I just wanted to have all the okay. words that. Mark, is that ringing a bell with you? 
Well, I'm just looking now at the, um, the it was a whole issue, issue of the transitional provisions. Yes. Um, let's see. Existing laws, uh, certain special laws. I don't. I don't have the. Uh, you know the, the original document or the original charter with me here. But I have it, but that doesn't help. I can just go back to the thing we got. And charter related acts. Related acts. That's so, all we have to say. Charter related acts. Yeah. That's yeah. Charter and related acts is the document. Okay. So instead of all special acts, all related acts? Well, um, you better say special acts because that's okay. Sure. So that's the name of this document. The Charter and Related Acts. Okay. So how is are we going to change the language in this? Shall we <coughs> all what? We currently have all special acts of the current charter. Shall review the charter and related acts and include those deemed to the those. What's the those referring to? Well, I think that we're getting too, I think it's the message as it goes to the specificity that we need here. Steve knows what we're talking about. And this, the uh, city solicitor and city clerk will also know what needs to be in the charter. So I, I wouldn't be over, I, I personally don't think we need that concerned about the specificity of what of the special acts. And if you feel uncomfortable with that, you could say I'll review all special acts and other related legislation that needs to be included in the charter. Now I know there's a lot of subsections and all that other kind of stuff that's in here, but with all due respect, mm -hmm. this 1980 because I take that back. But uh, there's 56. Should we just say all special acts and amendments of the current charter? Just to. Well, we're also including ordinances and rules and stuff. Yeah. Go with that, and then I think that's, again, I agree with Tom, but I think that we can get bogged down in trying to find the right yeah. word and they'll find a way around. Okay. That one. Do you think this is going to be a problem? Do you anticipate? No. No. Okay. no. I think they've heard strong enough. They can ignore someone. us. You know, that's fine, but the whole point is we're on record including tonight, hi, um, to make sure that, that the committee knows exactly how we feel about this. If they choose to put a document forward that doesn't include this, I think that that's a mistake. Okay, other general thoughts to the work that Todd and Bill did for us. And again, I want to commend you. I thought it was a very good, well-written document. There are a couple of um, sort of um, clunky um, typos in here that um, it, I found a few um, as I go back and read this for the fourth and fifth time, which I'll try to clean up. But if you find any more, you know, send them through. Yeah, yeah. yeah those <laughs> <two>. <laughs> Actually, doing more, I'll just... Um, yeah. okay. okay. If you do, please get those. We will leave this meeting tonight directly to Todd, and Todd will handle that piece of it. Now, yeah, how do we want to handle the bullets? We want to put them first in the same order of the narrative. So the bullet sections will, will follow the narrative. Okay. We want to put them in their current format. I don't particularly feel a need for you to rewrite them all to get them in the same style. Good. I mean, I would just like to take them on the tight ones, but I'd like to take them the way you did them. I will just get you term limits and signatures, yeah. and I'm going to add a paragraph to miscellaneous and get you a new miscellaneous. Yeah. And then you can put them in whatever format that okay. matches. Is that okay with people? Even though the form, the, and we can, I could put an introductory statement on it saying, you know, that this is submitted by different members. It's act as a recounting because the format will be different. If you notice in the first ones, we start with one, two, three, and then the rest of them don't have numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and Roman numerals. Huh? Yeah, we can do that. Should I in the. Um, I just, it, it's just that we, we jump around between formats. We have some Roman numerals, some not Roman numerals. Um, 
And I just think at this point in time, if we took all the Roman numerals out uh, and put it in the correct order. In the um, the two-page executive summary. Hang on, um, just one second. I had two sections. We move. summary with the bullet points. Um, should I include reference to an appendix? Yes. Okay. Um, Other comments? Right. I, the fact that the color code, I love it. I think <laughs> I do. I think it simplifies it, yeah. makes it real easy reading. <laughs> exactly the opposite. Did you really? <laughs> it took me 30 minutes to figure out how to change that on my. Uh, yeah, I'm going to poke around in a while. I think it just makes everything nice. Yeah. I, knew which nice section I, was, I knew which section I was going in. I was yeah. like, yep. Here's where I am. Okay, I just changed sections. Right. It's the only way I can keep everything straight. Um, other? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Todd and Bill will give, we'll give them the authority to come up with a final document and give it to Mary. I see consensus on that. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? We have a 7-0 vote is, on is that. Is Bill okay with being volunteer? <laughs> and it's on record. Well, I'll, I'll draft Gail and I will work on the bullets. And we will get that document and get that to Mary. Any questions or comments on that? Didn't we have Bill's, four things we're doing with the bullets. Didn't Bill say he was out of town? Is it today and tomorrow? Yeah, okay, so it may not be available. So it might be you. Okay, I don't work. Um, I was going to add one thing that I was going to add a bullet point um, uh, under the initial summary. Uh, we have uh, the last bullet point on page two is retain current process for mayoral appointments. Um, I don't think we have a reference to the initiative and referendum. Is that? I think we left out that bullet point. So I was going to include maintain. In the spirit of keeping what works. Yes, yes that is a bullet point. Yeah. Um, okay, no, you, I, I got sidetracked. Where was, what are you doing? On, on Gail, page. you should handle that. Or you want me to get what are we doing? No, no, no. On page, I'm talking about adding a bullet point on page two of the summary. It occurred to me that there wasn't a bullet point. Uh, Bill had broken out bullet points into changes and keeping what works. And we didn't have a bullet point for maintaining the initiative and okay. re referendum. Okay. So I was going to add that. But, um, now, Should I also add reference to not adopting the pre-petition or leave that for the, for the summary? Okay, yeah. um, I think you can leave that for okay, the summary. Gotcha. But, but in, in your bullet point, I just noticed this on page two, mm -hmm. uh, there is reference to citizen okay. initiative and referendum, okay. but the same error is in there. So I would just cross out that. Just put streamlined procedures. <coughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so we don't need that bullet. Uh -huh. that's right. well, Mark, Mark, we had you coming back with a bullet point for something somewhere. We wanted to make sure it was incorporated. Oh, um. I have that so in my notes. Um, was it dealing with the two-year or four-year term for the school board? Can anybody remember? All I said was <laughs> Seymour. <laughs> Gail, do you remember? It was about a point he was bringing up 
you felt it was more of a bullet point, not a... summary, a word that Bill used a couple of times in the narrative uh, when talking about wanting to have a flexible charter, uh, he used the word it did not belong in a rigid governing, <coughs> governing document. And I took rigid out because I thought that didn't sound correct, but is there a, I know the point he's getting at, but I'm trying to think, is there a word that describes what we mean by a, is there a legal term that would describe a rigid document that would, I think, give people a little more insight into what we meant by that? The, the point, I think, is not that it's rigid, but that it's general. That it, it's, it, okay. That it's, but I'm not, sure gen, I'm not sure we want to use that word, but I think that's the... We're not okay. talking about general. Okay. Okay. I would use the word general. I would. Okay. Where, where is this? Um, <coughs> it, it occurs on page one in the fourth paragraph. Um, and I, I took it out, but I, I had a little question mark whether I should put it in because it, it, he had said um, in that last sentence of the fourth paragraph, um, to, to this end uh, we strived, and I was going to change that to aspired. That's fine. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, to keep what works, fix what does not, and stay away from, and in some cases remove from the charter altogether, issues that, that do not belong in a rigid governing document designed to last another 100 years. I took out rigid, well, but find the way it is. Okay, so fine. Okay, that's fine. I just, that, that was my question. Whether I don't think did. you need an answer. Then. Okay, gotcha. Did you figure it out? Three right. o'clock this morning. You're gonna call me, aren't you? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so for the bullets, we're going to add the two sections which somehow are lost. We're going to remove the Roman numerals. We're going to put put it in the order of the executive summary. We're going to add the uh, new language from miscellaneous, and if Mark figures out what the, the sentence was, we'll put that bullet in. Um, Gail and I will handle that. Everybody comfortable with that process? I see one other um, place we've left out in, in the executive branch piece, the yeah. uh, bullet piece. Okay. There are, there are two blanks at the end, and um, that, there was some, I think there was some mix up in, in um, Maddie getting to me and finding the final stuff that she wanted. And I'm sorry, she's not here like this. I just left those blanks for her to fill in because this was originally her piece. We may now have to fill it in. Okay. People see where we are? Yeah. I'm going to throw you the microphone. I think so. The first one has to do with the um, other occupation or other business. Oh, oh that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is that doing there? It, um, it, when we, when we uh, put things into bullet form, I, I took stuff from the people who wrote it, who, who had written previous versions, and got it into bullet form. And when I got this one, there were no reasons. So I left it for, for Maddie to fill in. Oh. But I think there was a lot of... First, first, we did not strike language from the existing charter. That was in the boilerplate. That was, my, my recollection of that oh, was, okay. that was Steve created in the boilerplate, you can't have another job. Mm -hmm. And we said no. So I don't think we even have to address that because that's opening up a can of worms. Okay, just take it out. Take it out. <laughs> and I did the same thing with the summary that was included, and I, I came to the same conclusion that it wasn't okay. in the charter, it was in the boilerplate. Okay. So it wasn't a big change that we made. So it just, it's opening up a can of worms. He can address it as he wants, but. Um, um, Okay. Yes. My my comment is what it's doing here is this 
the issue of the mayor engaged in any other occupation, it's under the section of authority to make appointments. It doesn't, it, that doesn't belong here. Okay, it's, sorry. It's, I'll tell you what, it's, it, it, in the powers of the executive branch, it was mayoral qualifications, authority to make appointments. Those were the two main points of the bullets. And so um, I did one with arguments for and against, two with arguments for and against, and then the reasoning. So, I mean, we can basically can just that? say that the committee. So that's up at the top. <coughs> Mark, I got lost there for a second. Oh, you know what? I think my pages are out of order. The above that authority to make appointments. That's where you get into engaging in any other business. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But then there's this stray, this stray line here. Well, authority to make what? I think if I just page right before that. What's your? I was oh, I, I, I am missing a page. I just say that the committee, the consensus of the committee was in fit was was uh, with the arguments in favor of each provision. So it's already been spelled out here. So if I just refer back to those, I think we can make it fast. <coughs> can we go back? Or this? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's just make sure she's up to speed. Yeah. You hear her? Okay. I'll, I'll do it, but I have to change that one too. I need to get you a new one of those as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hang on. I just, I... Okay. Tom. Under authority to make appointments, and I'm, I'm with Mark on this, that this this phrase, the committee after some debate agreed to strike the language. Did we just say that we're taking that out entirely? That whole section comes out. Oh, entirely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then the next one down, we did come to the conclusion. The one's going to come, that's going to come out too. What I'm proposing is that that come out too, and that there just be a sentence at the end of <coughs> this set of bullets that says that um, the committee was in um, agreement with the arguments in favor of each of these provisions. Okay. So you will get me a new rewrite on this. She has a point she wants to make. Go for it. I thought Mark's uh, point to put a bullet had to do with the board and at large and simplify the structure. Is that what we come was. back to? It? She remembered. Oh, yay. Yay. So, Mark, you oh. have a bullet in the uh, school committee <coughs> somewhere. Where's the determinant? On page five. On page five. You wanted to put it in strengthening language about the school committee and the rotating and yeah. why. Okay. And that's a bullet. Now you have to figure out where it goes in the document. Okay. Okay. Is there um it's length of term Oh it, it's a different document than what you might have, right. It's length of term and that's the one that you said you didn't get. Yeah. It's, yeah. So it's not part of your package, okay. I'm sorry. So um that's where it goes. Yes. <laughs> so not in the in the summary then in the bullets. We're putting that piece into the bullets. Gail, can you find a place to put that and can you get that to me then when you send me the term the term like the term?
Is that a yes? Term limits we have in this packer. Can you look and see if you have length of terms too? No. I don't have a section called length of terms. I have a section called term limits in this packer. And it's fairly straightforward. We recommend no, no term limits. Sorry, I screwed up on that. Okay. Okay. Other changes, corrections, additions to either of these two documents? Um, the Compensation of elected officials. Yeah. Under further recommendation, the last uh, section. Is this the bullets or the? The bullets, I'm sorry, yes. The one in green. Okay. Find it? Yep. The last uh, last line of the first uh, full paragraph, the committee proposal the following, the com committee proposes the following, just a typo. Okay. You see that? Is it in yours? Uh, it's in the bullet points under further recommendations in that last, before you get to the colon, for the one and two. Is therefore the committee proposes the following. Some editing in mind. Sounds better than I recall. <laughs> but it's in yours. It's in is the, it your draft? No, no, no. It's in your. It's in the bullet points. It's in the bullet points that were sent out there last the last page. <laughs> I have it. Okay. okay. I will take care of that. Yeah. Ooh, I will take care of that. We have one other. Hang on. It happened. Thank you. I said to myself, I should bring my computer, Dave, and I could do it right on the computer, and I wouldn't screw it up. But no, I So you, you found that? I found it. Okay, I will take care of that. I'll put it on my list of things to do. One more change, Tom. Yes, yeah, going back to this document, Special Act Charter Drafting Committee, where we were talking about rigid governing document, uh -huh. uh, issues that didn't, do not belong in a municipal charter designed to last another hundred years, uh -huh. that seems to get rid of this uh, governing document. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. okay. Is that language you, you feel comfortable yep. with? Yeah. Oh, you wrote it down? Yeah, I wrote it down. Good. Okay. And if I see that word again, it may appear elsewhere. Do I have freedom Do a to search. Do it. Okay. <laughs> Other issues that people want to bring up at this time? I mean, we have a whole half hour to go, guys. So what's the process? I wasn't here on Thursday. You gave your presentation. How did that go? How'd you guys think the presentation went? I liked your, uh, your visuals. Yes. <laughs> we all could do that. I brought out my address book. I was trying to come up with a visual that the charter would look like. So Jeff and I got together 27 years ago. We started a dress book 27 years ago. So I pulled up the address book, and of course, envelopes, business cards, pages fell out. And I said, this is what our current charter is. And I said, if you actually look at the current charter now, there are things in there that are obsolete. They refer to aldermen. Uh, there's things written in the margins. There's words crossed out. I said, this is not the way a charter should be. And that our charter should look like it held up my iPhone. So I said, this that was is really charter. Excellent. <laughs> so, uh, sure. Now, you know, the five people who are watching City Council, you know, that was a great visual, but uh, I thought they presented a nice job of describing that. And um, uh, again, what we're trying to do is to modernize the charter. We're not trying to make any huge major changes here. We're trying to modernize the charter and clean it up. 
So that was the point I kept making. And I went back and I, the second point I tried to make was that they have eight weeks, the public, to weigh in on this. Once it leaves the city council, it is frozen. You can't change it after that point. You know, and, I, and again, um, Adam, in your headlines, if you could just make a note of that, that it's now the eight weeks and then it's over. Because after that, it's up or down. And if you don't like section six, you know, and you're passionate about it, you're going to have to vote it down, which would be a shame. Because the point is to get a new charter. And then from now on, it would be easier to change it because you don't have to reference everything over here. You can just have a straight, clean document that you can look at and make whatever changes are appropriate. So um, when you do these large-scale uh, revisions, such as we're doing the comprehensive charter reform, uh, that's our goal. So we hope that the public weighs in in the next eight weeks. Um, and then I gave a quick summary from what you had actually provided, uh, you and Bill, and that was it. So they asked some questions. Procedurally, they're going to meet on the 8th. They're going to try to get as much through it in the first, you know, and they'll, they're nine people with equally strong opinions. They'll come up with whatever they deem necessary as they move forward. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to take their two votes, have the public comment mm -hmm. period, and take their two votes by the end of March, and then we're on track. I think everybody is in agreement that they prefer it on this ballot, given the number of people who will be voting in a presidential election versus a smaller election or a special election. So, I'm right. just curious, because there's two of the councilors who are really for changing the you know, water and sewer fees. Do you think that, I'm just curious, did anybody hear how their councilor feels about it? You know, Jesse and um, uh, I forgot oh. the other guys, Owen, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw him last night. I was going to bring it up, and I and I yeah. didn't get a chance to. This was at uh, Claire's retirement party. Um, they they didn't. I didn't get a chance to ask him that. But it, again, when I talked to Owen about it before, I had said to him that um, you now have the you have the ability if you want to go there. Yeah. And I think that's you know. Well, we you know didn't how, have a restriction. We know how Marianne and, and right. Jean feel. So that's right. I just so Gene, well, Gene changed his mind. Oh, I know. Yeah. You know. He changed He's like, oh, I don't want to go there. It's like, yeah, I think the more people... So I think if Ned were to sit down and, and have a conversation with with uh, the city council about why this would be a good or a bad thing, I think that that would help educate the public and uh, city council. Um, but again, we just made it, cleaned it up a bit. Other general reactions to anything that's been said or done at this? Thank you all for your time. This has been an extraordinary <laughs> process in a 90-day period. Uh, uh, actually, about 100 days now. Um, I appreciate your time and your efforts putting in there. I think you put forward a good document. I hope that it passes uh, City Council uh, without major changes. I hope that it passes the city uh, in November. I want to thank Mary for all her help and in absentia, Mr. McGoldrick. Uh, but if there is no other business, I do not feel a need to sit around and kick this down the road one more time. <laughs> Especially since I have seven <laughs> projects to do tonight. When's our, when's our deadline? Or as soon as you possibly can get it done. Okay. Theoretically, we are disbanded as of this meeting. Okay. But you can produce the document, send it to Mary. Mary will post mm -hmm. the document and make sure that it is circulated to all the city councilors. Okay. Would you like me to format in your 555? Times New Roman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to get my revisions just to get them to you? Get them to me and then I'll, I'll take care and of them. I'll clean it up okay. from there. One quick question. You mentioned um, the city council meetings on the charter and that you should show up to offer insight. Would if you you're available a... and if you're available and can attend, um, you might spend the whole evening sitting in the audience. Right. You I might get called upon to answer any specific questions. So uh, uh, I will be late at best to that meeting. Steve so will be there too, though, right? Steve will be there as well. Yeah. But I just think that if some of you can attend and provide some background or information, or just so there is a resource in case someone has a question, we can say, well, look at the appendix, look at the bullet points, if, you know, um, whatever. Uh, but at this point in time, I just sort of feel. Um, at least one of us should be there, and I have to be in an all-day DPH meeting until 
there's actually a dinner afterwards I'm going to leave from, but um, so I'm going to be late getting back to town. 7.30, 8 o'clock is best. So if anybody can be there for 6, I think that would be helpful. We just might sit in the background and play with your iPhones. And Todd, could say, look in, Todd, you can say, check out the blue section on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a painting contractor, so I love color. <laughs> Other questions or business that people want to bring before? I need a motion to to disband. So moved. I need a second. Second. I want to take a roll call. The motion is to disband. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Thank you all for your service. Wait, 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 I appreciate wait, wait, wait. it. Wait, should we take a group picture? Yeah, we miss two people. <laughs> we will. <laughs> I brought a camera. Do you want to do the honors? No. Oh. Photoshop. They have Photoshop Obama in the back here. Come on down and take a picture. Thank you, Adam. Mary, stay in the picture. Is this the narrow lens that makes me look thinner? Yes. I'll do my best. Are you ready? Are you ready, everybody? Okay. Let's get one. Okay. One more. Flash. Ah, okay. Do you need five? That's it. I mean, that'd be good. And. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It was fun playing with you. I hope we get to play again in the future. Yay.